Hey guys, welcome back to Thunderdome Homestead. I wanted to give you guys something to think about today. And that is off-grid appliances. I have a few things here today I'm going to go over, plus a few honorable mentions. Uh, and we're going to start here. We have the Coleman stove. You just hook one of them little green propane bottles on over here, and you have a stove top to cook on. You can control the heat with these knobs here. The only caveat is you need propane. Next up, cast iron. I hardly feel the need to provide any sort of introduction because this right here is about as self-explanatory as you can get however I'm gonna provide one little tip for you so I like to take a grinder and smooth out the bottom of the pan clean it up because sometimes especially with your newer stuff you see there's kind of a textured edge there from the forging from the uh, casting process and a lot of times you'll have food particles that stick down into that. So what I do is I grind it down flush real nice, clean it up, and then I re-season it, and you have a nice smooth cooking surface. And along the same frame of mind, you have the Dutch oven. These guys are great for cooking all kinds of stuff. Um, this one right here is actually coated in ceramic. I found this guy for $20 on Marketplace. Normally they're almost $100. But the nice thing about these are you have all the benefits of cast iron, but some of the benefits of some of your newer cookware. So you have this coating. You don't have to worry about rust. And these right here are really good for watery foods and watery dishes like soups and stews and things like that. But you have the same longevity and durability as this. Okay, you folks with Instapots are going to love this. This is my pressure canner or cooker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can cook foods pressurized. You can do the same thing with this as you do an Instapot. You may have to modify things slightly or adjust the pressure manually. However, this still does the same exact thing as an Instapot. And, side note, you can preserve food with it. You can pressure can. You can put away meats and vegetables for longer term it can be kind of a nerve-wracking process for new newbies you know people that have never done it before however once you get the hang of it it's super super simple but yeah you can cook food the same way you would on an instapot with the pressure canner. Next up, food processing. So this is, this guy right here is pretty similar to, I think it's called a chop wizard. But you have various different, and they're sharp by the way, cutting utensils. You can replace this guy out for and where are you at? Aha. These are all the different attachments that come with it. I think I think I picked this up for less than 20 bucks. But you can get your little slicing attachment. You run your taters or whatever across there. And you can slice stuff. This guy is kind of similar. You have multiple different attachments for that, but you put whatever down in here, 
press it down with this and just rotate. And out she comes. And where would any off-grid kitchen be without a vintage analog scale? This thing is just about as accurate as you can get. I love this thing. I use it all the time. Alright guys, I'm not a very big coffee drinker. I actually don't really drink it. But I do uh, frequently hang around people that do. I'm more of a tea guy. And I know I shouldn't drink them, but I like the energy drinks as well. Any off-grid kitchen should have a teapot. This thing will scream and holler at you the second that the water's hot and ready to roll. And, uh, yeah. So, the next thing is this is a little... Let me see if I can find it here. This is uh, basically a, a tea bag type contraption. And what happens is you open that up, you throw whatever you're making tea out of, and this is really good for herbalists, people that make teas and tinctures out of their own stuff that they grow or find that has good medicinal purposes and things like that. And it's got a nice little handy hook to hang on the rim of your coffee cup. In any grid down scenario, if you, all you have is an electronic can opener, you're going to have a bad time. I keep probably 20 of these manual hand can openers, along with probably the same amount of these, the old school military ones. They're nice to have around on occasion. Now I think it's time that we shed a little light on the subject. In a grid down scenario, you're going to want light if you're cooking and doing things like that at night time. Get you some more lamps and something to hang it off of safely. Next up, the steamer. This is great for doing vegetables in. The idea behind this thing is you have them little posts that hold it up off the top of the pan, the pot, what have you. Here, I'll show you an example. You got your cast iron. You fill it up a little bit with water. Drop this guy down in. Cover it up. I wonder if this lid will fit on here. Probably. Perfect. Cover it up. Let the steam go. And you can steam and cook your vegetables. So what are you guys going to do when the power goes out and you don't have your little ninja blender or your mixer to make your mashed potatoes? This right here. It's hand powered. Trying to do this one handed is never great, but it works. There's a reason there's two handles, but it works good. I've actually tried it. It's not as convenient as the newer stuff, but life without electricity isn't the most convenient. Next up, clocks and hand timers. So analog is always the way to go when you're going off grid. If you're making a recipe or something that requires you to know what time it is or how many minutes something has been cooking, probably not going to work. Oh, there it is. So you want to be able to keep track of how long you've been cooking something 
or how long something has been being processed, especially with a process like pressure canning. Okay, so there's a few things that I own, but I don't currently have here on hand with me. Uh, one of which is a hand-powered meat grinder. It works the same way as one of them old grain mills. You take your, uh, your meat and you put it in the hopper in the top, hand crank it like that, and it'll grind out and it'll run through your grinding plate, and you will have ground meat off-grid. Also, the grain grinder as well. So, you put your wheat berries in there, you put uh, whatever, you, your corn, you grind it down, you make meal, you make flour, you make uh, whatever you need for your baking purposes. Side note, if you make beer and things like that, uh, this can also be helpful in that process as well. Now before we get into the honorable mentions, if you are looking to purchase any of these things, uh, some of which are antiques, so I'm not going to be able to provide a link. I'm sure you could find whatever you're looking for with a little legwork. However, whatever I can provide links for, I will put them down in the description for you. Okay guys, time for honorable mentions. So I have a percolator, but I think this thing could be potentially more convenient at times. It is a ceramic coffee dripper thing. Uh, you can put it, as you can see here, over top of either a coffee pot or a coffee cup. You just uh, heat up your water in like a teapot or something. You put your coffee filter over the top of it. You put your coffee grounds or your yeah your ground coffee in there, and you pour your hot water over it, and it'll drip down as coffee into whatever you have. Seems kind of convenient. And as you can see, it's about twenty-five bucks, probably closer to thirty with shipping. Last but not least, Coleman Camp Stove. I had a, I had an idea of getting something like this I, and potentially trying to test it on my wood stove. I don't know how well it'll work in that instance. I believe it's meant to be done over an actual open fire, if I'm not mistaken, or actually like a, a Coleman... Like the Coleman stove like I showed you earlier. You can see on the bottom there, it looks like there's some sort of a dampener. Uh, and then you have your dowel indicator for your uh, thermostat, how hot it is inside of there. And you see your little rack in there. You could probably bake some different breads and things like that. It might maybe muffins or something to that effect. Oh, there you go, muffins. But yeah. Eh, it's got a little price to it. About 50 bucks. But uh, if it works on a wood stove, and your actual gas or electric oven or what have you doesn't work anymore, this could be a game changer. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the ultimate goal at the end of the day would be to get uh, a wood-burning cook stove. And those things are really cool. I've seen them with ovens. I've seen them with hot water heaters and hot water tanks and stuff built into them. Uh, they have that flat top uh, burner. And uh, they also heat your house at the same time, which... If you can get two birds with one stone, that's great. However, in the summertime, if you're wanting to cook, that would kind of stink. 
Especially if you live where it's really hot. Anyhow, guys, hopefully this gave you some sort of ideas. Hopefully you took some of this information in and, and said to yourself, Man, I didn't think of that before. That's, that's a good idea. Some of these things I picked up in other places, and some of them I thought of on my own. I can't take complete and total credit for it, but some of it I can. Anyhow, please do me a favor. If you got anything out of this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share it with your friends, especially anybody you think might benefit from it. Alright guys, we'll talk to you later.